<laughs> Hello, stellar people, and welcome back to the channel. Today, we're going to talk about projects. Projects. I feel that a project is a great way to learn. Actually, it's just great. It's just great. If you want to learn anything, a project is a great way to get there. If you want to become a better artist in any capacity, whether it's painting, drawing, uh, heck, music, anything, have a project and go for it. Now, why? Why should you do a project? I think, again, through a project, you will sift through what you do know and what you don't know. I, it is one of the best ways to figure out, okay, this is the extent, <laughs> this is my level, these are the limits that I'm at, and then how to overcome those limits to become better. So when I was making my first comic, graphic novel, there was so much I did not know. Like even how to, the page orientation, that, you know, the odd numbers is going to start from your first page and you turn that page and then your evens are going to be on the left hand. And I, did, I had no clue. I was like, I, or how uh, in a graphic novel, gutters work, paneling, and the spacing between paneling, uh, all of that. And that's just like the semantics. Those are, that's just in the making of the book, not the actual drawing, right? Where do you struggle in perspective? Where do you struggle in anatomy? You know, and how do you make all these drawings be coherent? It's a lot, it's a lot, but you can exceed those limits. The internet, internet has a wealth of information at your fingertips. And I would say, use all of that, but make a project. I want to do blank, right? Whatever that blank is, that's your project. I want to do, I want to make a animation. I want to make a graphic novel. I want to make a children's book. I want to produce an album, right? Whatever it is, that project, do it. I, I highly, highly encourage you to do it. I remember when I was uh, trying to learn watercolor. I, I wanted to learn watercolor. I have always been interested in watercolor, but it was scary and I, I knew I wasn't going to do it. <laughs> I knew I wasn't. So I made a project for it. A project called The Moon Princess. And The Moon Princess was gonna be 200 illustrations, right? And I was gonna watercolor each one and um, did 50 a year. So 50 illustrations, all watercolor painted in a year. You know, and each 50 told a story. They were not very good. <laughs> I learned a whole lot about, you know, when it's wet, uh, you know, even just getting the image down onto the watercolor paper, how to, you know, secure it so that it doesn't warp and all that. And I did it. And that was a long term project. That was 50 a year for 200. That's four years. And that, that is, that was the project and I did it. And at the end, not only did I have a greater knowledge and respect of watercolor, but I had something to show for it. I had a, a stack, stack yay high of illustrations. Right? And I plan to bind that up and do something with it. But that was just to become better at watercolor. Just that was the, the whole point of the project. So for you, you want to do, uh, yeah, I highly encourage you. Now a caveat in the beginning, it's going to be hard. So hard, 
It's going to be because, again, you don't know where your limit is. Right. You might have an idea, but once you're you're pressed, then you'll know where your limit is. And then how can you exceed that limit? Right? Go beyond your limitations to do something, whatever that something is. But you're probably going to over over scope it. Please don't do that. Please don't do that, because that's one of the best ways to quit. Once you you become so overwhelmed after learning that, oh, my limit is this and I have so much to do and then you'll you'll want to quit. Recommendation. My advice is to make the project as small as possible, right? As small as possible. Make a small, small, small little itty bitty project, right? And once you get that under your belt, once you get, like if you want to make a, a comic book, a comic book is 22 pages, but I'd say do a test of four, a four page comic, right? Just, that's the lit. Then, you know, do your whole style, right? Take it to the max, see how long a page it takes you to do a page. How long does it take you to ink? How long does it take for colors? How long does it take to do the lettering? All of that, right? On a very small scale, very small. And after that, then you take a look at it and go, okay, I saw where my limits were. And once you see where your limits are, you can then try to exceed your limits. But start with something very, 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 very small, right? Minimum viable product, MVP, minimum viable product. Just make the least of your first project and then make another project and then make another project. And after the third one, then you know where your strengths and weaknesses are, right? Your strengths, weaknesses, and you can you know how to circumvent, you know, some bad tendencies, hopefully. Don't make your first project then your magnum opus. <laughs> don't, don't do it. Resist. Just MVP, minimum viable product for your first project. Now, scheduling. Scheduling is important. Once you have that minimum viable product, break that down into how long do you think it's going to take? Right? And usually, usually on your first one, since you, you're, you're starting fresh, everything is new, everything is blank, it's probably going to take you three times as long. Three times as long. So a schedule, say five days a week, right? Let's leave our weekends off unless you want to do more. If you're that type of person, good job. Kudos to you. But sometimes, you know, if you have circumstances, say a family, kids, a job, hell, even just wanting to take a break, you know, kick your feet up. We'll try to save that for the weekend, but you never know what could happen. Okay? The worst will probably happen on this first project. Uh, your kids will get sick, your wife will get sick, you will then get sick, which slows everything down. Now your schedule's off and you're trying to get back into the schedule. But again, you're, you're trying to recover because you need recovery time. And it's just a whole lot of stuff that will try to get into your way to stop you from doing whatever it is, right? And when you feel fear, you know, it's going to mess with you. But we'll talk about that a little bit. But a schedule can try to keep you on somewhat of a track. And once you realize, okay, I can do an image in, say, an hour, you can make that the goal for the day, right? Just to keep, the goal is to keep moving forward. So if you can do an image a day for, say, an hour, if you have more hours to throw at it, go for it. But sometimes all you got, it's like, ah, with work, kids, family, all I have is an hour. It's like, make that your, your go-to. Make that your time to sit down and go for it. Now, again, fear. Whew. Fear is going to get you. Because when you don't know what you don't know, fear is going to insert itself or try to insert itself into making you stop. 
And that would be a mistake, right? You want to get to that goal line. This is a marathon. You're just trying to get across that finish line. Fear, I was watching Dune. Fear is the mind killer, right? It's, it's the same. It's, you have to go beyond this boundary because if you don't, it will, it will kill you. <laughs> okay, that's dramatic, that's dramatic, I'm sorry. But fear will try everything, right? Distractions, that's fear. Going, ah, oh, it didn't really matter to me that much, and uh, I'm just gonna, right? That's fear. This is too hard, fear, right? There is nothing you can't surmount. There's nothing you can't overcome. Don't let it stop you. Don't let it stop you. you. Have a goal line, right? I want to get this project done. See it, make a schedule, plan it out, and then just take whatever small steps every day, every waking possible moment that you can to put into it, to get it across the finish line. Right? There was a saying, what is it? Real artist ship. Real artists ship. You have to ship. It's hard. I know. I know. I had, okay, a story from my, uh, for me, I was trying to make Willis Henry the graphic novel. And of course, scope creep. It became a 400 page graphic novel. That is, that is dumb for your first, no, 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 no. So, you know, I whittled it down, but even then making a graphic novel is, that's five jobs, it's five jobs. I, I did not think about that. Yes, there was a writer, you have to write it. There's a penciler, you have to pencil it. There's an inker, you have to ink it. There's a, a letterer, you have to letter it. There's a colorist, you have to color it. Um, writer, penciler, inker, colorist. Yeah. So I was like, oh my goodness. And I did, made the rookie mistake of trying to throw more hours at it. Right? And every waking moment was going to this thing and I burned. I crashed and burned, right? And I hated everything. It's like, get it away from me. I don't care. I don't want it anymore. And that wasn't true. And so after a year and, you know, hanging out with my friends and they're mostly artists, all artists, I kind of got back into my mojo. I picked it up again and was like, okay, I really want to do this. And I continued on. But don't be like me, where I was way too, way too big into it. I Small, 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 small. That's why I say small, small, small. Get it across the finish line. Make it doable and then do it. Now the reward. You've made the thing. You have to show the thing to somebody. I don't care if it's social media. I don't care if it's your family and friends. I don't care if it's you go to a, a craft shop, a, you know, a convention and you sell it. You know, show it to people. And usually your first one is not gonna be the best, right? Because, hey, you're, you're a freshman in this. You're new. It's, it's, it's to be expected. Yeah. Just feel great that you did it. You got it across the finish line. You shipped. Right? You did it. Celebrate that. However you can celebrate that. Celebrate it. Because it is, it's a feat. It is a it's a victory. It's a win. You know, that thing is now a trophy for you. <laughs> I did this. Right? You don't have to tell somebody about, oh, I have this idea for it. No, you go, I did this.
Okay. Yeah. So for example, mm. let's not talk about it. Let's show it. I did this. I did this. It's the trophy. Is it great? Debatable. But did I do it? Yes. Yes, I did. But yeah. All right. Whatever thing that you want to make, you can make it. All it takes is some time, dedication, but yes, it's a trophy. It's, it's that thing that you dragged out of the ether. Might not be the greatest thing ever, probably won't be, but you did it. You had a vision in your mind and you executed on that vision to make something that now exists in the real world, now exists. And you will come out the other side different. <sighs> You'll see the world differently. You'll know the extent of your powers. You'll know that whatever you put your mind to, you can do it. And that is the greatest reward of having a personal project. It's to look at it, to see it, to turn it in your hands, what was once only in your mind. And so, that is why I encourage you to make your own projects. Do it. You will be the better for it. And that was the topic of the day, projects. Please put down in the description down below if you've had any idea on what project you would make right. and other than that I want you to keep shining and I will see you on the next video take care <laughs>